Right, lads, today is actually International Men's Day, and it's a day I didn't actually know existed, mm. if I'm being completely honest. Um, I guess now more than ever it's got more importance. I mean, we're seeing conversations being made and, and had, and this year, especially with what's going on, it, it seems like a really important one. Uh, it'd be interesting to chat to you guys in particular, because as role models and people in, in football, you're probably seen by people like myself as kind of indestructible, kind mm. of strong... There's this thing about toxic masculinity, but to me, you're people that I look up to and go, wow, they're footballers, nothing bothers them. They're strong people mentally and physically. Mm. Um, how did you find it when you were players? Was it that toxic masculinity around the changing room and around the game? Yeah, I think, yeah, you know, you couldn't really show any weaknesses no. in there. That, that seems or deems unacceptable. Um, if you was in pain physically or mentally, if you're struggling with things, again, you weren't really allowed to sort of show that within the confines yeah. of the training area around your teammates because it was probably taken as you're not strong enough to, to get through and, and help the team achieve results and stuff. But I think today that, that, that myth has gone to a point where players are now, and men in particular, obviously, um, we can talk. There's people that you can talk to. There's, yeah. you know, there's a lot of good work that goes on now. So did you experience that as players and going through that you, you were maybe having some difficulties, but did you feel like mm. it was maybe harder to share? Yeah, definitely. I think I, I had times through my career where I struggled and, and I did. I never, I never really knew how to deal with it, wasn't prepared enough um, to deal with it. And, and I did struggle. And because of the environment that we have kind of grown up in, um, in terms of you know with football and, and the way things were, if you did show any kind of sadness, upset, or, or thought that if you went to someone for help to talk about it, you you felt like you was weak, um, and that was something that like was was kind of we had to feed into to um, to get where we you know we wanted to get to. You, you couldn't show any weakness at any point. You never wanted to give your opposition any chance of thinking that they could mm. get one over you or, or get the better of you. So. Um, it was difficult, but my time leaving Brentford, when I left, um, I really struggled. Obviously, moved club, um, although I still stayed in London, I moved to the other side of London, um, just struggled in terms of not being comfortable and what I was used to, not being where I was, um, and what I'd known for such a long time, what felt like home. Um, and then going into having to start all over again in terms of building up myself as a, as a player and trying to be... Um, you know, an asset to the club, and I really struggled, um, and I went through a bad period of time while I was there. Um, but the one thing that did do for me was it allowed me to have to look at myself and how I dealt with things. Um, at that point, I, I started drinking really badly um, yeah. and things like that, which most people probably don't know and, and stuff. But now, because of that experience, I'm thankful for it because what it did, it allowed me to understand that being vulnerable is okay. Um, but most of all, speaking about that vulnerability is a true strength and um, showing and understanding your vulnerability is, is a massive strength and it shows what kind of character you are if you're able to look at things, assess it, be honest and open about it with, with yourself most, most importantly but with others and then act to change that um, and I think that's the bit that goes missing sometimes in terms of strength for people. So did you speak to anyone at the time about like did you speak to your friends and, and no, your peers? No, at the time, so? no, I didn't. I didn't speak to anyone. The only person that experienced it with me was my was my wife because um, she lived with me. Um, and obviously, you know, there's so many different pressures. I've got my kids. I'm trying to obviously follow my dream and make it um, and and things like that, as well as be a dad, um, a husband, all of those things. So there's so many things that are going on, and at that time, I just felt like I was I was failing. Um, I really oh, did. That worthlessness feeling. Yeah, it, it oh, was mate. that feeling. I didn't know. I'd attached myself to being a footballer, um, and that's where I started to struggle because I wasn't playing, I wasn't being picked. I, I felt like I wasn't good enough, um, and I just didn't know. I didn't know who to speak to, what to do. I didn't know how to deal with it. But like I said, that experience has mm. made me so much more of a better person. And one thing now that I do, um, as as a you know, as a as a father. So my, my daughters and, and my son is I make sure that we are open and honest about everything. Whatever you think is a big a big thing, a small thing, I want to make sure that they're they're able to go and talk and express how they feel um, without judgment and without being feel without feeling like they're going to be judged. 
And do any do you, any of your teammates back then or any post of it? Guess now you've shared some of that information. How did they react? Because I had it with my best friend, and he he opened up in front of quite a big audience. Mm. And I literally, I'm not joking. This guy, I lived with him, and he talked. Sort of, and I I didn't see it, and it it, it broke my heart. If I'm being honest, mm, like yeah. we were all crying in the room because you didn't see it. Yeah. And he felt that it was horrible, but he didn't he wouldn't want to, didn't want to talk to me about it. Do you know what I mean? Like he didn't want to have those conversations and. Thankfully, because of things mm. like this, people are now talking. How important is that dialogue, though, mate? Like, and, and the strides we are making at the moment is... is it's, a, it's difficult to talk about. That's the thing that men struggle with. Um, it's still that sort of perception that yeah. men are not great at communicating. Um, I don't think that's, that's correct all the time. I think it's just... Instead of just being heard, you need to be listened to. Um, I think for, with my experiences as well, um, I just wanted to be reassured in certain situations. I remember six years ago, I got sacked. And that's the first time I've never been involved with football. And I was, what, 44 at the time? Um, up till then, I've always been in the game. And it felt the game just spat me out. And I was just moping about the place. I didn't even want to go n nowhere near football. Yeah, yeah. But luckily in 2015, <laughs> Brentford played Watford. And I was invited by the club to come down for that match, blah, blah, blah. I was a bit hesitant. I was like, mm. All right, I'll come. Um, and from then, I've perked up. I was probably in a mild depression at some stage, but it's by talking, being around people, being around the right sort of energy as well helps. So but what I'm saying is that communication with men, so it, it is difficult at times to speak up about where you're vulnerable, where you're weak. Yeah. Um, you don't want to come across blah, blah, blah. But Today, I will talk about absolutely anything. I've got no sort of shame or pride yeah. to say, look, this is happening or that's happening, but it's not always easy for men out there, especially when you're young as well, when you're growing into your sort of adult life as well. It's maybe not so easy. As Carly touched on, I, I talk to my son, my son's 19, and we talk about feelings and emotions um, because I know the importance of it for yeah. him because I didn't have that growing up. Mm -hmm. But I said, I need to be there in that position for him so he can just... If he wants to be on the phone and he's properly upset, great. Yeah. Let me have it and I can help, hopefully direct him in the right direction of, it's good to talk, don't ever bottle it up. And it goes back to that, that talks of masculinity. People think like, oh, you get called this or you mm. get called that. If you do it, like, oh, you ain't you ain't proper man because you've, you've said yeah. that stuff. I'm gonna be like, like now, mm. even things like, I think it's also important, a, a part of the discussion is about health as well. Yeah. Mm. So many men, and I'll be honest, are, are scared to go to a doctor Mm. Or something, say, it takes a massive, brave person to whip your old boy out and a doctor. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And go, yeah. I think I've got a problem here, yeah. which could save your life. That takes more than just to sit there and not mm. say anything because you're scared your mate go, might go, oh, you ain't as much of a man because yeah. of it. Like, and I think that's what, another thing, isn't it? With, with, with guys as well, you don't want to go to the doctor in case you're a bit scared of things. And then you mm. don't really want to tell your mate someone a bit scared because you don't want people to think you're scared. Yeah. Like, yeah, you don't want to be isolating yourself with no. an issue or, or something and, and be looked upon as like sometimes a laughing stock. Yeah. Yeah. Might be a little banter or a giggle about it, but it's something that is deeply personal. So that could also help play or not help, but stop men from talking up because yeah. of that sort of stigma. Yeah. I've been to doctors about a weird thing. I don't mind them like too much. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's, like, that's what they're there, there for. That's what, that's <laughs> yeah, what they're there you know for, mean? aren't they? Imagine but, if it was something worse and I had yeah. Exactly. And, I was, and like brown bread had got forbid mm. or something like that. Yeah. And just what because I was scared of getting a bit ribbed from the lads in the booze mm. or something like that. That's the thing, and it is that fear of being perceived as soft or yeah. however people want to say yeah. it. I think that's the bit where men struggle. Um, and it's starting to change. People are starting to be more honest in the way they feel. People are having more conversations, which is it's key. It's key for everyone, and it's about teaching everyone around you. But just, I think, like Gailey said it best there, Sometimes just listen. Yeah. You just need someone to just listen to you. It's not, it's not even always about having someone show you what to do or, or give you the solution for it, but sometimes you just want to be able to just be heard mm. um, and not be judged. And I think that's what we all have to do. We have to be able to speak, but we have to be able to listen as well. Do you think you learned that from your experiences? Mm. Because when yeah. you had that and that person did listen to you, that's what I found. Like, I put my mates through torture for a couple of years, yeah. I, mm. and I think, I don't mind talking about this because we need to normalise yeah, these yeah. conversations. Mm. But like, I've been seeing someone regularly s since March. Every, every Friday, I go and see someone. Yeah. Mm. And these are things. But it was luckily it was because of my mates, and they told me that 
think this would help you because they yeah. been for the same thing. Mm. And just knowing that they were willing to listen to me when I needed them and stuff, that worthlessness that we've spoken about, yeah. when it was like, oh, actually, maybe I'm not worthless. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. people that care about me and stuff. But that's the other thing I wanted to make, so I kind of went off the topic a bit there, is that normalising, see, getting the help, be it from a professional or from someone else, because it, it can save a life. We've seen the suicide yeah. figures lately mm. and stuff like that. It's the biggest killer in men from a certain age and stuff. Yeah. For me, I don't know but you guys, but seeing someone professional or something it should be the same as just going to a normal doctor or going to the gym okay. or going to the football and stuff. Like, it should just be everyday life. Right? It should be. It should be. I think everyone needs someone they can speak to. Yeah. I'm sure Gaby will I've, say the same. I've gone into counselling yeah. a few years ago because the communication between me and my boy was poor mm. and it broke us, but I suggested him coming as well. Yeah. And he did at his young age, which they say is not That's normal. That's massive. Yeah. But he came because it was important to him. So once he saw that I went, he went. <laughs> and um, yeah, we were like best of mates now anyway. We I put it off for everything. ages because yeah. of the stigma around it. I was yeah. like, I don't need that, I'm this, I'm now, mm. I'm a strong person. Like, it was a load of rubbish. I needed it a lot earlier, I, I think. Yeah. But I was just, I didn't want to do it. I, didn't, I thought it showed that, oh, right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's the way it is though, and we all suffer with different types of, of trauma, like you know, whether it be from your childhood, whether it be from a certain experience you've had, and we all suffer from different levels of that, and I think that's the thing. We, we, we have that, those things that happen to us and yeah. experiences, and then we kind of just put them to one side. That was a classic for me. Like, I've, like I said, I've had different issues. I grew up in a domestic violent relationship, so yeah. as a kid I saw some, some horrible things which were tough to, to go through, but those things played on me for years and years, and it um, mm. What it did do is it created, you know, it put me in a, it put me in a place where I would I wouldn't manage my emotions or my feelings right, um, and I got to a point in life where I was like, you know, I'm tired of feeling like that. I need to I need to be able to find solutions and and make sure I deal with things in the right way, not not just for myself but for the people that are close to me and around me, my kids, my partner, my my mum and dad, my family, um, and it was a journey for me to get myself to where I am now where I am comfortable and oh. I can be honest and I can talk about anything which I would never been able to do before um, and it's it's a journey there's no right or wrong way to do it but it's about trying to put yourself on that journey and, and finding trying to find a way to to deal with your emotions and I think that's the key the key thing it's important to have good people around you as yeah, well you need that um, and sometimes you might have it more with friends than family um, and sometimes I think as a footballer mm. Your family just think, oh, you've earned money, you play football, yeah. what do you need? And they forget the emotional yeah. support you need going through things. Because being a pro footballer, it can be lonely, it can be isolating. Yeah. You know, all the Christmases that <laughs> we don't see. sort of yeah. have. Yeah. I'm only just getting used to Christmases now, not just turned 50. Yeah. <laughs> because it's abnormal for me to eat yeah. A, yeah. a full plate of dinner and stay up all night or whatever. Different. As a footballer, you're, you're going to bed at half six, seven, yeah. because you're playing the next morning. So all these things, I think at times, you need outside voices that are impartial or unconnected to you to kind of be a, a, a set of ears for you to sort of talk to. And on this, so, so like obviously the, the cliche thing is, mm. you go, oh, come on, you're moaning about playing a bit of Christmas, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're earning X amount of money, you're earning this. Yeah. But it don't matter what the issue is, does it? You, you no. issue, it, don't, it affects everyone in different money, ways. Money is, yeah. money's mean, like, important. Then. I, that's what I was going to say as well. A lot of, I, I think for professional sport people, people in, in um, jobs where they earn a lot of money, that's kind of the thing that gets thrown at them, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. you earn a lot of money, so you should be right, but your happiness isn't connected to money. Yeah. Mm. You know, your happiness is so much more. And it's that journey within that you've got to find your happiness in. So you could be the richest person in the world, but it doesn't make you happy. But also, who am I to say to you, boys, you shouldn't feel like that? You, yeah. Your feelings are your feelings. feelings you know what I mean? Yeah. If like, something makes you feel like yeah. you feel, yeah. it don't matter if you're doing this or that. Like at the end of the day, you're open up saying you're struggling a bit with something. Yeah. Well, I need to be making sure instead of going, why are you struggling? You shouldn't be struggling. I should be going, how can I help you? And that's not saying that people don't, but it's just, I think, as a culture and society, I don't think That's I've been good enough at doing that yeah. with mates and it's taken these discussions mm -hmm. to listen to people a bit more and it can be the most trivial thing can spark something and it can grow and, yeah. it, and it turns so, into something else. It's about empathy as well. Yeah. Is trying to empathise with someone that might not be in the same spot as you yeah. at, at that mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. I think yeah. That's key to it but I said the perceptions at times doesn't help especially if you're a sports person because yeah. everyone thinks your life's easy. <laughs> and all this sort of stuff. We miss out on so much things because of 
that mm. wrongful perception. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're, we're all human beings. We, we, we feel we've got emotions um, and all that sort of stuff. So if we can put that to the front of everything instead of your status, the amount of money you might earn or did earn or whatever, if you put all that to one side, you'll see the essence of the person come out and then you'll be able to think, you know what, I've just listened to you. And, and that might be the thing that helps them. Yeah. I found that people, when even for myself, I found that I could fix myself because <laughs> I was pointing back into my Not direction. Right, yeah. Is that, oh, you've coached people, you've managed people, you just coach yourself. Mm -hmm. You've got all the tools, and that's the thing with it's, it's, sports yeah. people, we've got transferable skills to help ourselves and others in terms of the discipline, yeah. <laughs> yeah. the team ethic, all these sort of attributes that you need to be excellent in what you do. You've got to just do that for yourself first and foremost, and then you're in a position to help others. Appreciate you guys sharing that stuff. Is there, is there anything that you'd say to people? That, what, what are the big things that, you, that you've come, um, come away from this? With? I would just say, don't be too ashamed to pick up the phone and, and talk. But at the same time, if you're one of those chatty people, pick up the phone oh, yeah. and check in on your mates. Yeah. Don't yeah. just message, but pick up, no. pick up the phone and call. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with Gailey there. Um, and listen, I, I'll be honest, I'm not always the best at picking up the phone sometimes when we get wrapped up in life don't we but if someone calls me and needs to need someone to hear I'll gladly hear no matter what I'm doing I'll, I'll drop that to, to listen but mm. it is for me it's just about taking accountability for yourself and what you're doing and how you're trying to make yourself the best version of yourself you can be and ultimately trying to lose that fear of of um, everybody else's judgment because it's easy to make it it's easier to say than, than it's done but who cares sometimes mm, yeah it's, you got. To, who cares what others think sometimes? Yeah. You know, it's, it's about how you feel and how you think, and that's the most important thing. And if you're not feeling the right way, then try and find a solution and whether that's speak yeah. to someone, read in, educate, whatever it is for you. Find find what it is for you that makes you feel better. I guess that in time we've got to change that language around yeah. these problems yeah. so people aren't being told, man up because well, I mean, yeah. you're feeling like mm -hmm. these things like that. But yeah. look, appreciate your time for, and talking about that. Lads.